Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidy houses in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. Let us see what the postman brought today. Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. Your order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. Another letter from Werner. I never reply, but they keep coming. I don't see the Strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. The missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick, who... No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. Cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. You were mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. See, Watson? The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's mad. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. Blast. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me, 
Did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm. Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. Watson. Cool. Now I can take the day off. Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin, they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. I had to protect the merchandise. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears, if you have more shillings. That Mr. Holmes murder? Yes, Barnes has his quirks, but Get it the also strand. has his Get your copy of the strand Not here. every pawn knows it's part of a game. Mr. Barnes, a word. <gasps> oh, for goodness sake. Who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please... Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you come in. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am... Deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just take it and pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? I could hardly imagine anything more macabre. Basics of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. A 
an improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. The finest view London has to offer. The ladder is broken, recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. Uh, apologies, but I can't hear you. Please come back later. is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, my flowers could use the rainfall. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses? Our national emblem. God save the Queen. It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Familiar spine. Is this what I found in my dustbin? The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. I'll be off. Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. What do you make of the flowers in Barnes' shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. I don't know anything about this, sorry. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, 
We've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would edge such longing onto his face. I, uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. we better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes? It's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. So, you know what happened, then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package. Heavy, too. And when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs Fleming noticed. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts, and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you, and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of The Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, Mr Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and... and, uh... Yes, yes, okay. Just give me the paper. Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. 
Let me know if there's any way I can make it up to you. Tell you what, tomorrow's edition of The Strand is on me. Well, that was an utter waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied... I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. It doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery, nor the story to launch my writing career. But it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come. Not much further now. Is this lousy attitude of yours because of my altercation with Inspector Lockhart? Did he put you up to this? Sir, the Inspector has nothing to do with it. I'm telling you the same thing I tell anyone seeking a missing person. <clears throat> Good day, gentlemen. Forgive the intrusion. Captain Stenwick, this is my colleague Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective I told you about. At last, a professional. This useless officer refuses to do anything about Kimmy here, my missing servant. What was your name again? I shall be certain to inform your superiors. Sergeant Ruffles. And it's my superiors who made this decision, sir. Have there been other disappearances lately? Of course, here and there. But when life is tough and opportunity comes knocking, you can't blame those who answer. Why has the police department decided not to help? We investigate murders, thefts, fraud, arson, real crimes. A servant walking away from his master is not our highest priority. That said, if we find Kimahia breaking the law, we'll be sure to notify Captain Stenwick. Now, I must be off. Best of luck in your search. <laughs> you heard that, didn't you? The way that man spoke to me. I shall need your written testimony. Then we can lodge a complaint. Captain, perhaps Mr. Holmes' time is better spent learning about your servant, so that he may begin his investigation. Ah, yes. Quite right. Fire away. Tell me about Kim here. He's foreign. A Maori. All the way from New Zealand. Biggest man you've ever seen. And as strong as two. Dark hair and fearsome tattoos. He doesn't speak a whit of English. Never bothered to learn. But I made do with pointing. I invested a lot of money in him, so he must be found. When did you last see your servant? Kimmy here normally brings me the morning papers, but yesterday I had to get them myself. He must have escaped the night before yesterday. May I see your servant's bedroom? This shack is in the garden. You can't miss it. Did you search the room? Of course, but only to check he wasn't lying dead inside. Everything seemed normal at a glance. I take it this is the first time Kimahira has vanished? Undoubtedly. The man seemed terrified of the city. I think it was all the noise. He never left this estate. Should he cause any damage, I will bear the responsibility, for it was I who rescued him from savagery and brought him here to England in the first place. Is there any reason Kimahir may have left? I should think not. He had all he could have wanted. Gainful employment, new clothes, and all the cabbage he could eat. Did Kimahir make off with anything of value? Heavens no. I would have mentioned it to Sergeant Ruffles. 
Still, he must have fled with some money on his person. No, no. I kept his wages in my safe. For security. All right, Captain. I think I have enough to get started. We shall first take a look around the mansion. Go ahead. I'll be here, mentally drafting my complaint. Looks like a knee print. Chewing tobacco. A shoe print, roughly size 11, with a worn out sole. These are a workman's boots. Someone knelt here. The amount of chewing tobacco suggests they were waiting a while. Amazing, Mr. Holmes, to read the ground like an open book. This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. Rag reeks of smoke. Someone plugged the chimney. Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head here. A small navy spyglass. Scrap of Hessian. These were sturdy boxes. It would have required a serious blow to break them. Clothes made of Hessian. Is Stenwick really so miserly? A Maori nose flute. Ngurus, they're called. Is this a Tanifa, a Maori water spoon? Or something else? Either way, it's giving me chills. Button chops. The remains of a meal. A heavy chemical odor. Lend me your nose, Doctor. Ah, I'll never forget that smell after my time in Afghanistan. That's an opioid, Mr. Holmes, a narcotic. The ashes are long since cold. No air coming through it.
the door to your garden has an interesting lock. Yes, I have uncommon locks on every door of my mansion. It makes them harder to pick. Kimmy here and I both had a set of keys. I'll need to borrow them. No, you'll need to do what I tell you to do. Examine the garden. Where on earth are you going with this? I came across a pile of Hessian clothes in the shack. Are they Kimahir's? Yes. I had to give him something to clothe himself. He seemed unfazed by his bare skin, but I found it distracting. Is this spyglass familiar? I don't recognize it. Could it be Kimahir's, perhaps? I doubt it. I never saw him with it, nor could I suggest how he might have come by it. Are you joking? Why would I know this? I thought you were meant to be intelligent. Do you happen to know Kimahir's shoe size? I wouldn't have the foggiest, but I'm sure it was enormous. Not that it matters. He spent his life barefoot. Despite my best efforts, he simply did not take to shoes. Has Kimahir ever indulged in tobacco? No. The man doesn't even drink. Are you certain? I found chewing tobacco in the garden. I controlled Kimihir's expenses since he struggled with the currency. I would have known if he used tobacco. Could have left these tracks. They seem fresh. Someone moved a cart to this spot and then took it elsewhere. Can't see it anywhere in the garden. Surveilling from afar, the intruder waited for a window of opportunity. When Kimihir went to sleep, the man crept up to the shack and slipped narcotics down the chimney pipe, then blocked it with a cloth. Kimihir inhaled the sedative and fell into a deep sleep. The intruder tried to move him, but the man was heavier than expected. The intruder fell on the sack and dropped his spyglass. In order to transport the servant, he had to use the cart. The final challenge was opening the garden door. Luckily for our intruder, Kimihir had the key in his shack. Remarkable. It makes total sense. You'd best have found something by now, gentlemen. I found the residue of narcotics in Kimihir's brazier. There are several explanations, perhaps your servant's recreational interest, or an attempt at poisoning. Cut to the chase, Mr. Holmes. I fear that someone may have spied upon Kimihir. 
Likely the owner of the spyglass I found earlier. It appears they were watching for some time, as there was an impressive amount of chewing tobacco on the ground. And your point? You said that you checked the shack earlier. Did you notice the cart tracks near it? Now, one ought to expect a servant to make regular use of such a thing. Indeed, I would have overlooked the detail were it not for the cart's absence. If, as you say, Kimmer here never leaves your estate, then where did it go? I expect answers from you, Mr. Holmes, not questions. I won't keep you in suspense any longer, Captain. Kimmer here was abducted by the owner of the spyglass. When your servant fell asleep, he slipped a narcotic into Kimahir's brazier to make him sleep even more soundly. In order to carry a man as large as Kimahir, the intruder stole the cart and rolled him right out of your garden. Now, hold on. All this simply to tell me what I already know. Why haven't you found him yet? I only arrived a moment ago. It is, frankly, incredible that I have already deduced so much. Every second you dawdle here, waiting for me to stroke your ego, is another second wasted. I'm not interested in the how, the why, or the who. I am only interested in recovering my investment. Spare me the claptrap, boy, and go and fetch my servant. Truly, there is no better evidence of a man's nature than the way he treats those who help him. And you, sir, are a brute. The cruelty of your ignorance about the Maori people, your selfish attitude to a man's kidnapping. Uh, the point is, Captain, we're telling you this for a reason. The intruder fled through the garden door, and we need a key to follow his trail. Well, then you should have led with that. Here you go. I hope you'll return soon with good news. And in the meantime, please teach your companion the art of brevity. Sturdy rope, professionally tied in a Portuguese bowline. This knot is often used by sailors to create a bosun's chair. Wheels picked up grass along the way. Kimahir's cart, I gather. Roy Soulsby. Could that be the name of our man? A strange substance. I have my suspicions based on the color and consistency, but would you care to hazard a guess, Doctor? Well, it's odorless, but from the way it absorbs water, I'd say saltpeter. Then we're in agreement. Well done.
The strand proved not so useless after all. The saltpeter accident, Doctor, do you recall? The Port of London, of course. The footwear, the spyglass. Indeed, we shall need to take a cab there. Where to, Gav? The Port of London, please. I will show you where to stop. Mr. Holmes, what a compelling mystery we have stumbled upon. Perhaps I have the premise of my next novel. Uh, one kidnapping does not a story make. Stop! A black cat crossed before us. It's a bad omen. I did not take you for the superstitious type, Doctor. Such things are mere fantasies, tricks of a feeble mind. One imagines a physician would keep a surer footing in reality. Perhaps. Before the war, my time abroad was difficult. Once, I came across an Afghan, bleeding, who I could not save. He pressed a rosary into my hand. A gift, he said, so as to gain God's favor. After that... Dr. Watson? Yes, well, I shan't get into details, but sometime later I found myself lost in the desert. Dehydration set in things grew ever more dire. The man's words came to me. I said a prayer and placed the rosary on a rock. A gift to gain God's favor. And you were rescued? Yes. A detachment of British soldiers found me. To whom I'm grateful. Without their diligence, you would not be standing here and I would not have this case. I'm sure you have another explanation prepared, Mr. Holmes, but I think I shall cling to the occasional superstition all the same. To each his own, Dr. Watson. So long as it does not interfere with my methods, do it. We must press on, cat or no cat. The question remains, why abduct Kimmer here? Establishment. I've seen worse. You? Greetings, miss. I'm hoping you can help us. We shall soon see. I heard tell of a recent explosion in the port. What do you know of it? Ah, yes. Something exploded in a ship's cargo hold. Caused a terrible blaze. The sky was red with smoke till morning. Where precisely did it occur? The ship sank near the third pier, next to the dockyard. My colleague and I are seeking a burly man, above average height, with workman's boots. Half my customers, then. Your description hardly narrows things down. Clothes are already tight, and soon they won't fit at all. How far along are you? I... I thought I'd hidden it better. How did you know? Are you a doctor? In a manner of speaking. He's not. He merely has the ego of one. I apologize, miss. Mr. Holmes is fond of his observations, but I am the doctor here, not him. Do you need any help? I'm fine, thank you. I would rather not discuss my condition, nor let word of it spread. Never heard of it. Are you familiar with a Roy Soulsby? 
Roy Soulsby? Hmm, I know the name, but he's not one of my regulars. My guess is that he works somewhere around here. After the incident the other day, it seems customers are staying at home. Dalton swear she saw ghosts in warehouse too. Not in the mood, mate. Shoo! Pardon me, sir. I am looking for Roy. Oh, not again. Yes, I'm Roy, but I can't help you find your uncle or whoever you've lost. Now, what makes you think I would inquire about missing people? You are the fourth person to ask this week. Just because I work at the port doesn't mean I keep track of everyone who comes here. You say we are not the first to ask you about a disappearance. Do you recall anything about those who came inquiring? Hmm. I only remember the foreign woman. I didn't catch her name, but... Those are her posters hanging up everywhere. She has badgered me twice now, and I still don't know nothing. And this woman can be found? No clue. She was talking gibberish. Now, where was I? You there, mate. What are you on about? What are you on about? Sorry, doesn't ring a bell. Have you seen this before? My, my card? Where did you dig that up? At a crime scene near Baker Street involving a young servant's kidnapping, I might add. I. I. No. Someone used it without my consent. How else would it end up there? Do you know anything about this? As much as I'd like to help you, I know nothing about this.
What do you know about this poster? A foreign woman asked to put it up. She's plastered them all over the port. Any clues as to her whereabouts? None. It was hard to understand what she was saying. The people here are resilient. Tomorrow it'll all be forgotten. A man is very sick here. It sounds as though those people will need my help. The coffin won't go away, and the doctor's too pricey. Is this familiar to me? I can't help you with this. Hello, lad. Is this where I may find Dea? You read the poster? Yes? You know where my brother Girves is? Sadly, no. Well, not yet. I want to speak to Dea. Is she around? Emma. My mother. She got sick after the hot... the fire. Big red smoke. She couldn't breathe, so I took her to the doctor. Now I am in charge. Where did you last see Girves? He worked at a, um, warehouse. This man, Roy Solby, gave him the job. He paid him a ne a necklace. Do you still have the necklace that Solsby gave to Girves? Girves left it near the, um, shrine. I tried to sell it to buy Alma medicine, but but no one wanted to buy. How would you describe this Soulsby? He was big and strong. Um, he had a big scary eye. Scary, you say? Yes, like uh, like it was made of metal. Don't go anywhere. This cheap pendant looks like silver, but it's only made of tin. No surprise the boy couldn't sell it. I miss Gervis. Do you think he's okay? It appears that the saltpeter explosion rattled the locals. Can't blame them for staying at home. What are you gawping at? What are you on about? I have been told that you hired Dea's son, Girves, right before he vanished. His brother also said you had a metal eye. What do you make of this? Tell that him to stop making things up. Go away, and the doctor is too pricey. 
I should have helped Amma put out the posters. If she hadn't been in the smoke so long, maybe she wouldn't be sick. Have you ever heard of a man with a metallic eye? I've seen him even. Dirty Summers is the name. A nasty lout with a silver ball in place of a missing eye. I shudder to ask, but where does one find a dirty Summers? He likely signed on with a ship. I am not one to spy on others, let alone him. Hmm, I see. My advice, keep away from him. What are you gawping at? Mr. Soulsby, you know more than you're letting... What, what makes you say that? A man named Dirty Summers was involved in some recent kidnappings across London. He used your name as a cover for his deeds. What? Really? That doesn't mean I'm involved, though. Your calling card was found at the crime scene. That's enough to make you a suspect. You cannot be serious. It's true. And that's before mentioning your gold watch. It's brand new and awfully expensive for a customs officer. Clearly you have found yourself another source of income. I'm sure Scotland Yard will be delighted to investigate further. All right, stop. Look, it's not as it seems. I did not partake in the kidnapping. I'm all ears, Mr. Salisbury. Yes, I know, Summers. He paid me to turn a blind eye to his business in the warehouse area. Just that, on my word. You did not tell me which warehouse he used? I do not recall, but I use red paint to mark unsupervised warehouses. Ought to be one of them. What else can you say of Summers? 
He is a regular at the Cursed Mermaid. Goes there with his crew almost every evening. What for? I don't know. I assumed just for a drink. Do I have the feeling that you know more about Dirty Summers than you're letting on? I have nothing more to add, sir. I failed to follow. Are you finished? I have glasses to wash. Why do I have the feeling that you know more about Dirty Summers than you're letting... I failed to follow. Are you finished? I have glasses. Why do I have the feeling that you know more about Dirty... Enough. I have hard evidence that Summers was involved in recent kidnappings across London. I'm not surprised. So what? A customs officer, Roy Soulsby, testified that Summers was a regular here. You must know something about his business. All I know is his drinks order. If the lives of the missing do not concern you, then I would urge you to think about your unborn child. Are you threatening me? Many people are missing, and the main suspect based himself in your establishment. One word to Scotland Yard and your life takes a turn for the worse. Now, spare yourself the trouble and tell me all you know. Okay, okay. Summer's hired my private room. I think he used it to recruit people, but I haven't seen him in a few days. He paid me cash, so I paid him no attention. Nor did I touch anything inside. Here's the key, go and do what you will. Just leave me out of it. Five shillings. That won't go far. Strange symbols. I don't recognize them. Never heard of it. What did you see of Summer's work here? He was recruiting people. It was like the whole world came through my door. People of all creeds and colours, but always strong, always tall. They seem like workers or journeymen. Beyond that, there's not much more to tell. I took his money and let him be. And this lasted how long? Several weeks, I wager.
things. Look, sorry, I know nothing. Long warehouse. Nothing to see. Good evening, Constable. I heard some people talking of ghosts in this warehouse. <sighs> uh, gossips, all of them. An old lady neighbor saw some lights and ghostly shapes in the middle of the night. She heard music too. Turns out this was the warehouse of Grandpa Kujak. He owned a business with theater props for scary shows. I went in and... Well, it is a bit creepy but I think it was probably just some kids fooling around. Do you mind if I take a look inside? Not at all. It's like Madame Tussauds, only worse. I'll be on the beat round the pub for the rest of the night. Damned explosion. Good night, sir. May I ask for your assistance? I can't help you with that, sir. Really, Holmes, this ought to be beneath you. As my brother would say, it is for the greater good. Good quality, but torn in many spots. Mold. That's why you don't leave sailcloth lying out.
The scratches are fresh, left by something metallic. There are a couple of marks on this end. This crank saw some use. The layers of rust will prevent any movement. It's stuck. No one's used it in a very long time. Well oiled and well maintained. Fit for a crank. Passage, just as I expected. Wait here, Watson, and keep an eye on the doors. I'll scout the premises. Will do. Be careful down there. have been under the port of London all along. Is it an illusion? Icy cold and pulsating. <laughs> My heart, be calm. to breathe here. It's like it stares right through me. That, 
is that? It stares right through me. already spinning when will this end there are two recesses oh, my head what just happened Stench. A strange stone. It almost feels alive. Down, on to go.
Oh, that is truly revolting.
frozen and pulsing almost like it has a heart. Did I get out? John? What is it, Holmes? Holmes, where are you? Holmes. Holmes. Are you all right? Uh, fine. Watson, um, I, I, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Fine? By Jove, you should have heard the way you called out my name. It was just a game of shadows. I'm glad. This place gives me the chills. What are we dealing with? Something that's finally interesting. Cyanosis of the lips, marks on the neck. This man was strangled. His abdomen is severely bloated. Did you hear that, Watson? I, uh, I hear you. At least two dozen pendants, all identical and made of tin. An American passport, Amos Colby. I've never seen a pattern like this before. Old blood stains. Someone got their hands dirty painting this with blood. It seems made for simple experiments. I wager they could not afford a better set. This box contained a narcotic substance, much like the one in Kimihia's brazier. Black Edelweiss Institute established 17 something. A 
small blood stain, but not serious. Deep scratches left in a frenzy. The strength it would take to carry this crate, let alone break it. Potent. This sensor has more narcotic residues. Oh, potent. This sensor has more narcotic residues. What on earth? It looks like the scribbling of madmen. Clothes are missing buttons. They were forcefully removed. <laughs> Dumpra, a staple of lecture men's attire in Nepal, gathered from dozens of people at the very least. Miserable food, mass-produced. I hope we are close to finding our answers. This place is unsettling. Oh, I must have seen this one before. That explains my hallucinations. Holmes, are you sure you've left no stone unturned? <laughs> Fine rope work, cut by a finer blade. <laughs> These clothes were crudely cut off someone. An American, judging by the style. Someone used mud to draw a cross in a rectangle. Why? Conductors stripped off their clothes and discarded them in a pile. The prisoners were kept in a soporific trance by the use of narcotics. A few tried to resist, but alas, in vain. After a few days, everyone was stuffed in a crate and sent elsewhere. Only one captive was left behind. He was strangled to death on this altar. Happening, Holmes. Calm yourself. It cannot be. What is it?
Please tell me we found all we needed to, Holmes. I think we found a bit more than that. Yet we have no clue as to where those people have been taken. And that's where you're wrong, Watson. We have more than enough. I just need to connect the dots. How about you pack your suitcase in the meantime, my dear fellow? Just in case. Dr. Watson, how does a trip to Switzerland sound to you? It sounds unexpected. What makes you think we should head there? It's all about the box with narcotics and Mr. Colby's clue, the cross inside a rectangle. Put two and two together, add a dash of research, and what do you get? The Black Edelweiss Institute in Interlaken, Switzerland. If we hurry, we can still catch tonight's train. As grateful as I have been for your company, Dr. Watson, I'm afraid you shall have to investigate Edelweiss alone. Alone? Mr. Holmes, I fear you overestimate my abilities. Nonsense. You are a military man, a bastion of British courage. I'm no such thing. As a doctor, I avoided most combat, save for one dreadful day. My troop was ambushed in a village with innocents caught in the crossfire. Too many to help. The man with the rosary. He was one of them? A translator, yes. We were trapped. Six soldiers and myself. I thought it was the end. But Lieutenant Paget refused to go quietly. The men prepared for a final stand. I rose to follow, but Paget shook his head. He told me to run. That I had other men to save. They charged. And I fled through the rear. So you see, Mr. Holmes, I am a coward. The logic seems inescapable. Yes. You, a surgeon by trade, would have been perfectly useless in that conflict. What? No. And how many men have you helped since? Ailments eased, troubles tended? No more than a handful. 
Truth be told, I've become somewhat of a recluse. How many people could you help with 30 years ahead of you? Dozens? Hundreds? Padgett was correct. You can cease your self-recrimination. Holmes, I... I don't know what to say. I would start with, I am Dr. John Watson, may I look around? The Edelweiss staff will doubtless be eager to show off their facility to a fellow physician. I have already taken the liberty of sending a letter on your behalf to request a visit. And what of you? I shall be pursuing other avenues. Should you see anything troublesome or improper, simply notify the local authorities. Otherwise, try a little analysis yourself. You know my methods. Apply them. Salutations, madam. I am Dr. John Watson. I was wondering if you've got word of my visit. Yeah, Dr. Watson. We received your letter on the matter. Would it be to see Professor Gygax? At their earliest convenience, yes. I shall try not to take up too much of their valuable time. Wait here, bitte. Mr. and Mrs. Bronson, your girl has made remarkable progress. See? Take a look for yourself. My apologies for keeping you waiting, Dr. Watson. Surely you understand how medical work can make one lose track of time. Do not be sorry, Professor. I too know the importance of closely attending to patients. The work hardly stops here. Yet the satisfaction of perfecting the mind compels us to persevere. I take it you welcome many a soul into your establishment? Admissions, yes. Visitors, though? I am curious as to what brought you to the Schwarzes Edelweiss. Word of mouth. An article I read back in London spoke highly of your institution. But rather than taking its word for it, I thought I would see things for myself. My asylum's reputation precedes it then. Everyone, your attention, please. Guten day. Yes, hi. Hello. The name's Amos Colby, Northwood Detective Agency, Boston. I got questions that need answers. Who's in charge here? What seems to be the matter, Dr. Watson? You can tell me. By Jove, it, it cannot be him. Uh, <clears throat> right. Yes, I was surprised because that man is a, a celebrity. Yes, that's it. Very famous, Mr. Colby. I couldn't believe my eyes. No, 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 no. In my line of work, it can't wait. The longest If you to wish to recuperate, truth, Dr. Watson, you may avail yourself of the guest room. But I have so much more to discuss. Nurse, if you'd be so kind as to escort Dr. Watson to the guest room. Herr Colby, from Northwood Agency. How unexpected. I am Professor Gygax. I would be happy to answer your questions in the examination room. Look, Professor, unless you got any clues as to the whereabouts of... There is no need to be alarmed. No one gets me Ah, 
Now, now. Let's not resort to brute force. Do not worry, Herr Colby. My methods are rather more delicate. Search him thoroughly. Then take him to the holding chamber. We need to decide precisely what to do with our guest. Truncheon, not the typical tool for a nurse. You there! I command you to free me at once! I'm not sure that's a great idea at the moment. How dare you deny me? I must have my revenge against the Lickspittles upstairs! Fortunately for you, I'm here to stop the very same people. You are? Indeed. But first, I must discover all I can about this institution. Tell me, have you witnessed the arrival of any foreign patients? Tell me? The goal? The impertinence to bark such orders? Please, we don't have time for this. Do you know with whom you speak? I am the great Napoleon! Napoleon Bonaparte? The one and only. Emperor of the French, first consul of the Republic, leader of La Grande Armée. Once I am free and have exacted my revenge against the guards who ridicule me, I shall rest happy in the arms of my beloved Josephine. Right. Well, I will leave you to your scheming, Emperor. My heart is pierced by Cupid. I disdain all glittering gold. There is nothing can console me but my jolly sailor bold. A certificate of appreciation from the Municipal Councillor to Professor Becker for contributions to the development of medicine in Interlaken. A simple toolbox, yet capable of repairing anything. This photo was damaged, seemingly by oil. I can make out the names listed here. Cooking grease. Is this the kitchen dumbwaiter? Looks like it's still operational. John Sallow, the Tulpa phenomenon. I'm somewhat of an expert already. R.G. Hill, Dr. Connolly, it appears that all the psychiatric classics were banished here. of varying diameters. Interesting. Speech and the Cerebellum by S.A. Becker.
raw materials used to formulate medicine. Any chemist would envy the quality of this equipment. The final product, ready to cure madness, or to push one deeper into its grasp. With this equipment, they can create any type of medication. Very sturdy. I might borrow it. What was that? Is someone there? Darn. No way I can get past him without being noticed. There's the guest room. I wonder if Watson was able to speak to Gygax. Locked. I suppose the reception will be guarded anyway. This sedative worked faster than I expected. Perhaps I ought to train myself. Build up a tolerance. I'd rather not sit in this chair ever again. should suffice. Sounds sinister, even for a place like this. I wonder if there are more frogs in the pond. This should be enough to avoid unwanted attention. At least from a distance. Manufactured and packaged here. This is the same narcotic substance that we found in London. from your skull with my fingernails. Miss, I... I'll gouge your eyes out and cut off your hands, just like you did to Heidi. I am quite certain you would, but I'm afraid you have me mistaken for someone else. So, I take it your name is Gerda? Who is Heidi? You talk strange. 
You're going to Hell's Door, aren't you? To where those other funny talkers finally shut up? Hell's Door? To what do you refer? Only Heidi had answers. Go away, pig! I merely... I said go, or you will spend your last moments on Earth screaming. This door won't stop me. Lord, how unsettling. The damage seems intentional. So you're Heidi. I didn't realize I was on haunted doll watch. Fabric burnt in the furnace. A jalabir, a traditional garment from Northern Africa. Garments of several dozen people, at least. I will make them pay for what they did to Heidi. I believe I have found your friend. Heidi! Oh, poor girl. What did they do to you? Shh. It's all right, Al. Everything will be all right. Please. Gerda, now I have found Heidi, I need some help from you in return. Shh, Heidi. We should thank the man, don't you think? Have you ever met Professor Becker? I remember him. He was in charge here before that witch, Gygax. But I haven't heard his voice for a long time. Too bad. He was nice. Tell me all you know about those funny-talking people. We'd hear their screams. The guards would take them down the corridor behind you, and they'd disappear. And the screams would stop. How did you end up in Block B? The nurses say I'm prone to violent outbursts, but they're wrong. I just do what Heidi tells me. Professor Gygax seems to rule this facility with an iron fist. Do you know anything about her? She's sick. She did nasty things to us. Separated me and Heidi just for fun. Before she got here, this place was all right. I shall leave you two to get reacquainted. So this is how they kept the prisoners docile and harmless. An orthodox reliquary commonly found in Eastern Europe, now in a cell halfway up the Alps. This stretcher was disinfected frequently. <laughs> These 
These are the same crates we found in London. I should take a closer look. Kidnappers even provided airflow. How generous. This is the same design as the one from London. I doubt that one could survive such a journey with this little water. Dirt and sweat. They were locked in here for days, judging by the smell. This trip was prolonged and perilous. A bottle this dirty doesn't break by accident. Substantial blood loss. One poor soul found another way out. can be open for deliveries. The stamp on this crate confirms it came from America. That's quite a distance to travel. were back through these doors and they began to unload their cargo in secret. Next the crates were opened, freeing their passengers. Not everyone survived the journey. The dirty, exhausted and dehydrated prisoners were then herded into cells. All the cells are now empty and I have not located a morgue. Time to find Hell's Door. Lost you, Heidi. The murderer used his left hand to kill Hannah with a brick.
Scratches. Something has been moved through here. This seems to be a locking mechanism. The whole thing must be a door. Make them pay for what they did to Heidi. I found Hell's door, the one that made the foreigners silent, remember? How do I open it? Gerda, please, I cannot get inside. You have to tell me how to open it. How can you speak to me like nothing's wrong? Can't you hear Heidi crying? Look at her! Look! She's suffering. I can't even hear my thoughts over her screams. Poor, poor Heidi. We will fix you, I promise. We will fix you! Leave it with me, Gerda. Going to be good as new.
Will this help fix your friend? Give it to me. How is she feeling? Everything will be all right, Heidi. Everything. Goethe, I have a couple of questions. Yes, I... Shut your dirty little mouth, Goethe. You've said enough already. Uh... She won't speak no more. Now it's only Heidi. You helped me, and I didn't cut out your eyes. So we're even. Now go! Heidi, there are things I need some clarity. Ask if you dare, but if I get bored, there will be consequences. I found Hell's Door, but it's locked. Is there a way to get in? Hell's Door? Never heard of it. That's not true. You, Gerda, told me that Hell's Door makes people silent forever. And you believe that snotty little girl? I'll personally ensure that she never dares to speak again! Professor Gygax hurt you repeatedly, scarred your body and mind. You are not protecting Hell's Door. You are simply afraid of the consequences were I to enter. I could tap your teeth out with a hammer until you choked on the blood in bits. You could. But then you would live the rest of your life in fear of Professor Gygax. I can make that feeling go away. How? I can stop her. But the key, Heidi, the key to Hell's Door is critical to stopping Professor Gygax. And I think you know where it is. Tell him! But you said... And now I say tell him! The professor... She has a special key. Keeps it close and only brings it down when you people go through. Behind those closed doors, those people start to sing. Oh, they sing in so much pain. Gygax. Of course. Thank you, Gerda. Heidi. I must leave. Leave? <laughs> you joke. Nobody leaves the Edelweiss. Now you will be with us forever! At last! You came to your senses. My humble apologies, Emperor. Spare me your groveling, Englishman. Of course. You are right as ever, for you see, time is of the essence. The Royalists have risen again, and your darling Josephine needs you. Paris needs you. Mon amour! But the guards upstairs in reception stand in your way. Ha! They will pose no problem for the likes of me. Merci, Englishman. When I return to Les Tuileries, I shall make you a general. Oh, you are too kind, Emperor. Now go. Your freedom awaits. I am coming, Josephine. Josephine, 
Watson, over here. Holmes, what are you doing here, and where did you get that outfit? It is unimportant. I require your assistance. Well, that is rich, because clearly it was unimportant to tell me what you were planning beforehand. Amos Colby? Your naivety was essential to sell the disguise. Actually, it wasn't. You should have trusted me. Watson, we can discuss this later. Time is of the utmost importance. The kidnapped people may still be here. This is what I know so far. What? You really found all this on your own? Focus, Watson. I need you to find a key. It will be most unique. All the details are in my notes. Logic dictates that Gygax will keep it near her. Once acquired, you must get it to me. Perhaps the kitchen dumbwaiter could be of use. Holmes, I... I can't do this. I'm no spy. Yes, you can, Watson. You are unfailingly dependable. Dr. Watson, visitors are not permitted back here. I am terribly sorry, Mr. Kuntz. After the war, my nerves, I, uh, I fled all that commotion. It is nothing. A patient attempted to escape. He will not get far. Now, if you would like to follow me. Blood in the water. Someone must have washed their hands here recently. What have we got ourselves into, Holmes? Perhaps I should take this. For all, I hope it won't be needed. Did a child make these? Dr. Watson. Just the man I wanted to see. Professor, I'm surprised you're not trying to catch that SKP. Please, my time is far too valuable. I hope Nurse Kuntz has been taking good care of you. He has certainly kept me out of trouble. Professor, it is time for your appointment with your next patient, Mr. Wolf. Herr Wolf can wait until tomorrow. I wish to speak with Dr. Watson. Uh, as you wish. You still see patients yourself, even as the director of this entire facility? Only the important ones. And yet I rarely get to pick the brain of a man like yourself. I think it is time we got to know each other, no? I'm afraid there's not much to know. I'm just an average chap living a rather prosaic life these days. Dr. Watson, those of us who pursue knowledge are anything but average. Now, who are you? I'm a physician in search of a stimulating career. I have patients, yes, but admittedly, I'm more interested in the cutting edge of medical research. So when I read about the Black Abel Vice and your work on the healing of minds, I simply had to learn more. I suppose my Abel Vice was always destined to attract other curious minds. But before we continue, I want you to understand one thing. A broken mind can never be truly healed. Ah, I see. So... What exactly do you do here? It is simple. If you cannot fix a person's nature, you must force them to forget it. Surely there are other methods of treatment. How naive. You remind me of a man I once knew, Professor Becker. But we do not speak of him anymore. A colleague? The former director here. One day he realized that Edelweiss had outgrown him and had to... Already, Doctor? How rude of me. I was absorbing your wise words, Professor, and must have got distracted. Was my conversation boring you? No, not at all. I, I merely... No, no. I understand full well. You're not seeking conversation. What do you mean? It is obvious. Your mind craves truth, but not in this form. You must witness a practical demonstration if you are to learn. I'm certainly intrigued. Would that be possible? Of course. I propose a journey between the jury of the human brain. You will not leave without being truly enlightened. Kunz, take Dr. Watson back to the courtyard. 
Then tell the nurses to prepare the operation room and the girl with the doll. Yes, Professor. Our preparations will take a little time. I will come for you soon, Doctor. I hope everything is to your liking, Dr. Watson. Looks dusty, but functional. Oh, we never use that. I think it connects somewhere downstairs. Did you hear that a patient escaped? All the guards rushed off to find him? Struggling to remember something. This area is off limits. A patient has escaped. I don't want a guard block B tonight. <laughs> I want them to fly! Minor birds, if I'm not mistaken. Beautiful creatures. How sad that they're caged here. Give it to me. No, I don't want to. Why not? A visitor. No, no. You shouldn't have come here. Miss? I hear them scratching. Don't you hear it? Photograph seems recent. A commemorative photo album. Been a while since I've been in one of these. Good Lord, that's a lot of records. Hope you're finding your room comfortable, Dr. Watson. I can't just leave Holmes here alone. We rarely have visitors here. A 
suppose it will be one last uncle for me to feed if he dies after all. You are Mr. Wolf, am I right? Oh, hello. Who might you be? My name is Dr. John Watson. I wanted to talk with you, if you didn't mind. Ah, Doctor. I don't suppose you could help. I, I seem to have forgotten where I am. We're in the Black Edelweiss, Mr. Wolf. It's an asylum in Switzerland, and you are one of its most important patients. But why am I here? That's what I was about to ask you. I can't remember. Sorry, I, I can't remember anything. It's all right. You don't need to push. Try to relax. Let the thoughts come and go. Now, what comes to mind? Mr. Wolf? Oh, hello. Who might you be? We... we just went over this. I'm sorry, but I don't think we've met. We were just discussing this facility, the Black Edelweiss Asylum, and why you are here. That name does sound familiar. Holmes, the things I do for you... Excuse me, who are you? And who's this Holmes fellow? I am Dr. Watson, and Holmes is... Well, you could call him my imaginary friend. That's just a little joke, don't mind me. But why am I here, Doctor? Am I sick? I'm sure I can take a look. do to you. Excuse me? Uh, who are you? Oh, never mind. Again. You won't remember me, but we've met before. I am Dr. John Watson, and you are Professor Becker. You were the previous director of this facility, the Black Edelweiss. Professor, really? Actually, that name does sound familiar. Wait, wait. Let me write it down. I try to recall memories through writing, but they always feel just out of reach. As a matter of fact, I have more for you to jot down. Oh, yes. Yes, please, anything. Professor Gygax did this to you. She made you forget everything, even who you are. But we will play a trick on her. We will write a letter so that she learns her lesson. Put down what I dictate. Dear Professor Gygax, I bitterly regret that I let my beautiful alpine flower fall under your influence. I see now that you never deserve to sit as the director of the Black Edelweiss. You will be brought to justice and the world will know your cruelty. And by the time you make it to my cell, the police will already know the truth of how you came to be director of this asylum. Signed, Professor Becker. There. It's done. Now, hold on a minute. Who are you? My name is John Watson. I'm a doctor from London, a veteran of Afghanistan, and I wish to be a writer, though deep down I fear I lack the talent. And presently I'm risking my life to help my brilliant detective flatmate in the pursuit of a cult of kidnappers, even as I fear it may destroy him. I'm tired and hungry, and I have not had a good bath in weeks, and yet, despite it all, I... I feel alive. Any more questions? Good heavens, sir! You're as mad as they come! One of the patients asked me to deliver this note. It's for Professor Gygax. Thank you, Doctor. Leave it with me. Unbelievable. 
Kunz. Wo ist mir? Nothing special about this. Close, but I don't think this is the key. Mm -mm, this is too small to be what Holmes asked for. Edelweiss relief about two inches in diameter. This must be what Holmes was after. Sealed tight, I can't exit the same way. The tooth of an adult male, likely lost in a beating, only a couple of days old. Inside of the cuff is worn. It's been used often. A wax cylinder. There is something recorded on it. The writing is mostly gone. Phonetic symbols, perhaps. Looks as if it's been recently used.
dynamo machine. Provides electrical stimulation for the person in the chair. Full grain leather straps, impossible to escape. A very professional brain dissection. The abyss is the light from the abyss. Oh. Get out of my head. elevator how ingenious judging by the remnants of blood and flesh these instruments were used for dismemberment dear god is that body parts utterly inhuman Watson? Holmes, what are you still doing here? Still? I was trying to find more information. Did you think I was just going to sit in my room twiddling my thumbs? I only asked you to find the key. I had everything else under control. Says the man who looks like he saw a ghost. I'm fine, Watson. You're hardly fine. You reek of congealed blood and chemicals. What did you see down there? Never mind me. Where's Gygax? I'm afraid she's over there. I found her like that when I entered, on my word. What? She was our biggest lead. Yet another wrinkle in our investigation. What do we do now, Holmes? Hush. Let me think. Heidi, how did she... it end up here? The pencil is buried deep all the way to the brain. Instant death. 
No traces of blood on her clothes. Must have got on her white overcoat. The patients here wear the same robes. We'd better inform the local police about this. You're right, Watson. But first, we need to determine where our case goes next. what we needed, Watson. This conspiracy reaches further than we thought. I don't suppose you've ever been to New Orleans? You are joking. I seldom do. Let's go. There's no time to waste. Nothing in this world that cannot be explained with logic and reason. Nothing in this world. Holmes? Hmm? You seem troubled. I'm not troubled, Watson. I am preoccupied. That place was awful. Inhumane. It would be natural to experience some feelings of shock or fear. Men reduced to gibbering imbeciles, numb beyond recognition, powerless to help themselves. When a doctor does go wrong, they are the first of criminals. They have the nerve, and they have the knowledge. That woman did not deserve the title. Such casual cruelty for such selfish aims. I knew another man like that once. He treated my mother, perhaps even killed her, depending on who you ask. My sincere condolences. In the end, she was just a shadow of herself. The outline of the person I recognized, but lacking all else, she was pushed until she cracked. Should you see me cracking, John? I must ask you to intervene. Nothing compels us to pursue this matter further, Sherlock. We can return to London, report what we have discovered, let more capable hands take over. Alas, there are no such hands. Were we to abandon our quest now, I fear no other would succeed in our stead. We know nothing of what awaits, what dangers lurk in the darkness. Nonsense. We draw nearer to New Orleans with every passing minute, and thus closer to the answers we seek. Those answers, for all their perversity and improbability, will nevertheless be the work of men. And that is a work I have studied well. So be it. I know you to be a diligent author, but if I may make one request. Kindly omit my mother and her suffering from your tale. Of course. Thank you, John. Ah, Holmes. After our trip to Nippy, Switzerland, I can certainly use some of this new world eat. Did not get carried away, Watson. What we could certainly use are answers to my questions. I know. But you look exhausted. Why don't we find the hotel first? We shall rest when our investigation is over, and not a moment sooner. I shall ask you to handle our bags while I search for the bank. 
As you wish. Oi! Stop it, you! Our luggage! Good lord, what have you done? That's my stuff. I'm sorry, mister. It, it was an accident. Ah, not an auspicious start, is it? Never mind. I'll handle it. You go on ahead. Is this familiar to you? Oh, I know this. Yeah, let me help you. Our ship leaves tomorrow morning. No room for sightseeing then. More people missing here, too. Black opals being auctioned at the banking house of E.W. Gray. Mr. Frank Barnaby, right? Auction's about to start. You have me mistaken, sir. My name... If you ain't Frank Barnaby, you ain't coming in. Listen, the fate of many lives is at stake. I'm sure it is. So, not going to let me in, then? No name, no invitation, no entry. Holmes, over here. Any luck? None. They're holding an auction, invitation only. The good news is... I know who might have one. We need to find Mr. Barnaby. Who? Frank Barnaby, most likely a local. And you think Mr. Barnaby would be happy to share his invitation? Let us first find him, then we can see if he is the generous type. How marvelous, Holmes. A city within a city. Indeed, those lanterns are delightful. It is as... Help me, please. I'm bold and tired, but yes, I'll help you. Locked. No one's here. 
Rather unassuming for a jewelry store. Damn. He at it again. Barnaby still owes you. If he can't pay in greenback, he'll pay in blood. Are you able to help me? I'm bone tired, but yeah, I'll help you. This place has a Spartan charm, does it not? It does. My soul will always yearn for London's gloom, but it reminds me of Cordona in a nice way. Barnaby, unconscious but with his eyes open. Look, Watson, the two of you are just alike. Oh, great, so I look like a haggard alcoholic. Eureka! What have you got? An idea. First, we'll need Mr. Barnaby's clothes. Holmes. Watson, time is of the essence. You will go to the bank, not as yourself, but as Frank Barnaby. Holmes, we look nothing alike. The hat and coat will do the heavy lifting. Just stay cool, play the part, and no one will notice the difference. Trust me. Holmes, must we really indulge in this farce? It worked in Switzerland, didn't it? Sure, if you redefine the word worked. Where's the money, Barnaby? I'll wait here so as not to arouse suspicion. Mr. Barnaby. Uh, right you are, shop owner. Right. Your invitation, sir? Here you go. You okay, sir? Seem to have the jumps. I, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm in a rush. Uh, come on in. Heavens, I've never seen gems so big. I simply must have them. Sorry, I'm just dealing with another client's request. Please wait a moment. This might be useful. I'll make a note. Morning, sir, and welcome to the E.W. Gray Banking House. The auction will begin shortly. Name's Zoe Clemens, and I'd be delighted to help you. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Clemens. I am Doc... Uh, Frank Barnaby. I do have some questions, if you don't mind. These gems are rather curious. What can you tell me about them? These rare beauties are black opals, all the way from Cooper Petty, South Australia. When they catch the light, the dark stone becomes a brilliant rainbow. It's something special. Forgive my curiosity, but who was the previous owner? Sir, I ain't at liberty to disclose them details. It doesn't say where these stones came from. No provenance, no previous owner. I'm starting to suspect they were illegally procured. What? We would never. I can assure you, these gems were bought from one of New Orleans' most upstanding citizens, a philanthropist no less. If you would like to know more, I could get my manager. You old dog, Barnaby. <laughs> Didn't think you'd sober up for the auction. An hour ago, you were three sheets to the wind. Oh, well, uh, you know, I hold my liquor better than most. And the auction was an important business opportunity. An important business opportunity. <laughs> What have you done with the real Barnaby? 
<laughs> well, maybe I'm drunker than I thought, mister. Mister? What's wrong, Frank? You're looking pale. Don't you recognize your old pal, Grub? Sorry, Sheriff, but I don't have time for this. Now, Frank, when I'm talking to you, everything else waits. If I want to talk, you talk. If I say jump, you say off which pier. Do we understand each other? Y yes sir Good. Now, while I have you, there's the matter of your outstanding fines. I've been more than reasonable, but I'm afraid the bills come due. Fines? Right. Uh... I'm afraid I don't have anything on me. That's funny. Ain't you at the auction? I weren't born yesterday, Frank. Now, assault, battery, disorderly conduct, that's serious stuff. You got off easy, but if you don't pay up, things get a whole lot worse. Look, Sheriff, I'm not actually... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Think careful now, because Frank Barnaby only owes us cash. But fraud... Impersonation? That's weasel behavior. And you know what we do to weasels round these parts. Feed them to the gators. So, Frank, what's it gonna be? Here's all I have. Mighty fine of you. The people of this parish deserve peace. They don't take kindly to visitors. Don't miss that boat tomorrow morning, Doctor. I told you, Holmes. I told you it was a bad plan. Now we're penniless and wanted criminals. Hysteria gets us nowhere, Watson. Tell me what happened. The sheriff saw right through me. He knew who I was from the start. Extorted me for every coin I had. Bah. All that matters is what you learned about the gems. I shan't discuss it while still wearing that blighter's clothes. I'm going back to the boat to get changed. Now our clothes are in the bloomin' water. It was like the luggage had legs of its own. Oh, Mr. Pratchett will have my head. I ain't sure what you did to the sheriff, but it must have been something real hairy to have him chuck your luggage off the pier. With respect, miss, have we met before? If you were the real Frank Barnaby, yeah, we would have. But where are my manners? I'm Lucy. And you are? John, I didn't mean to be rude. I've just had a difficult day, miss. Well, it's barely noon. And you've already made an enemy in Sheriff Grubb. The man starves his gators just in case someone crosses him. John who? Watson. Well, Johnny, if you plan on sticking around, you better change that suit, or Frank's reputation will catch up with you. And then you'll be a John Doe. Alas, I think one of those gators is currently devouring my spare clothes. 
<laughs> you got yourself in a fine pickle. All right, come on board the Nymph of Louisiana, and I'll sort you something to wear. The Nymph? Is that what it sounds like? Why are you helping me? Well, let's just say you ain't the only one who's had run-ins with the Sheriff. Way I see it, this city deserves better. Now quit your stalling and head on over to the Nymph. I'll be in room six. This Mr. Barnaby is proving rather useful. Perhaps you're not so different after all. One more word, Holmes, and I'll hand you over to the Sheriff. Sorry, was that John talking, or Frank? Oh, go annoy someone Always else while I visit the Nymph. You, Mr. Barnaby. Welcome home. Well, look at you. All dressed up with nowhere to go. I can't thank you enough. As I was saying, our journey has hardly gone to plan. We seem no closer to finding our missing people than when we left. Hmm. Well, if there were anything to know, Champagne will know it. She's across everything in New Orleans. Look for her in the Fisherman's Village behind the Creole Quarter. Thank you again, Lucy. I shall make my way there now. Good luck, Johnny. Keep out of trouble. Oh, forgive me, Watson. The difference is plain as day. What a remarkable transformation from Barnaby. If we're critiquing wardrobes, Holmes, maybe you can explain why you used to roll just one sleeve up. Did you get bored halfway through? we here? A local crime star. A star? You have a strange way with words. Frankly, we have more pressing matters. I'm not going after Where these troublemakers, but the posters Get will add nicely to my collection of criminal profiles. I read a study that suggests facial features can determine a person's tendency towards cruelty or deviant behavior. Well, you can't stop progress. Could you help me? It isn't possible for me to help you. I'm sorry. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die! May I ask for your assistance? I've heard about that. Let me tell you. Tocqueville? Lafayette! Hush now. No offense here. Them two don't take kindly to gents, especially foreigners. How can champagne help you? Trip to the bayou? Feeding a huge cockle deal? 
Some other time, perhaps. Word has it you know everything that goes on round these parts. Maybe, maybe not. What you want to know? The bank in town recently purchased a valuable collection of gemstones from a wealthy man. What do you know of it? Sheer. I hear everything. This time I tell you for free. Next time you pay. Thank you. May have been one, two weeks ago. Rich man's butler sold him some black opals. And this rich man is? Don't know his name, only that he from the French Quarter. Folk back in town could take you there. That's all I know. You need a boat? I hire him out for dollars. Or a bottle of you know what. Thank you for the offer and the help. Could you help me? I've heard about that. Let me tell you. Got a spot in mind? French Quarter, and get us there fast. Watson, the opulent mansions and stifling heat remind me of my time in the Mediterranean. Corona does sound rather magical. Do you think you shall ever return? I... I don't know. That place was home to some of my greatest memories and... some of my lowest moments. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I'm bone tired, but yeah, i help you. I have company, I have company. Help me. Hmm. No way in. Hmm. No way in. Excuse me, miss. Are you all right? What is your name? Eula, sir. Waiting for someone, Eula? Y uh, yes, sir. My brother Davy. He works for Mr. Arneson in that mansion yonder. <laughs> Been five days now since I last heard from him. Come now. Why all the tears? Something happened to Davy. I feel it in my bones. Do you think he may have left the premises? No, sir. Davy, he ain't like you and me. He's smart in some ways, but he can't talk. Not a word. He's, he's pure and kind. Fear not. We will look for your brother. One presumes this gate is locked. Is there any other way inside? There's another entrance through the stables you could try. That's where I meet Davy normally, but I, I couldn't get in. See, I couldn't find the key. It wasn't in its usual spot. Please hurry, sir. Find him for me.
I rather wish my lockpicks had not been lost in the river. Along with all our clothes, books, tea. This must be the key to the stables. The poor animal has been suffering for days. It's dehydrated, Holmes. Without water, it will die. Mr. Arneson's cab is still here. Cayenne pepper. Half empty, or as Watson would say, half full. This might be useful. At least that's one life saved. drops of blood, but not from a mortal wound. Watson, would you please lend me your medical expertise? I'll do my best. <laughs> His corneas are already clouded. The hand can bend freely. Rigor mortis has passed. Hay on his trousers suggests a gardener or groom. A deep stab reached the man's heart. Clean edges suggest a sharp blade, but the wound is too wide for an ordinary knife. This man has been dead for a week. The result of a sharp object piercing his heart. You are mostly right, but I would bet he died five days ago. Heat and humidity will have accelerated the decomposition. Mr. Arneson with his prey. Someone was bleeding, but it doesn't look lethal. Burnt papers, now completely unreadable.
trail of wax leads to the door. The candle was burning when it fell. Someone smaller walked over these boot prints. I will need your help one more time, Doctor. An enormous blow shattered her ribcage. Blooded, broken nails. The poor woman tried to put up a fight. Extremely sharp and deadly. A wound like this could only be dealt by a man of incredible strength. And cruelty. Why does it look so familiar? T for two. An odd glimpse of normalcy amid the horror. A used kitchen towel. But I wouldn't give for a nice bath right now, Holmes. A dashing portrait of Mr. Arneson. A dull book about local geology. Even I'd struggle. Note the blade, Watson. A curved dagger, 
Probably of Persian or Indian origin. Nine or ten inches, I'd say. Arneson and Davy seem to have got along well. He looks more like a son than a servant. Arneson and Davy, 1881. Fauna of Louisiana. Full of things that bite, no doubt. New Pied Piper. Foreigners missing in New Orleans. The bent end of this candlestick has blood on it.
An intruder entered through the back door at night, leaving mud traces in the hallway. Without being noticed, they picked up a candlestick and struck the man in the chair from behind. In the kitchen, two people were drinking tea, the workman and cook. They were startled by the noise of a falling body and went to investigate the parlor. The workman tried to subdue the intruder, but was stabbed by the attacker's knife. Judging by the wound, it was a curved blade. The cook panicked and fled back to the kitchen. The intruder followed, but since their blade was stuck in the workman, they used the meat cleaver on the table to kill her. Someone smaller arrived and discovered the carnage. They dropped the candlestick in horror and ran for safety to a room down the hallway. Meanwhile, the intruder returned to his first victim and dragged their stunned body away from the fireplace and out into the garden. What horrors happened here? Davy, please open the door. After all this, Holmes, I doubt the young man would open the door to a stranger. There's blood here. Luxurious shoes, size nine. These fingers were severed with a single clean stroke, but I don't see the thumb or middle finger. Look, Watson, animal prints. I wonder what kind. Boots, size 10. A scrap of silk, soft and elegant.
This place sets my teeth on edge, Holmes. Size 10, the owner's footprints were shallow. <laughs> Size 10, the heels were sinking into the ground. Look here, Doctor. Two sets of footprints left by the same person, yet they vary in depth. What do you conclude? Hmm. Perhaps they arrived empty-handed, but left carrying something heavy. Precisely. We'll make a detective in you yet, Watson. Poor Eula requires medical examination. Be swift, Watson. Ligature marks on her neck. There'll be a bruise, but she should be okay. Doctor? Watson, speak to me. How is she? We were just in time, Holmes. Eula is stable, but lucky to be alive. We should take her to a hospital for a further examination. Yes. I fear I was wrong, Watson. The Sheriff is not a man to be underestimated. To lynch an innocent woman just to send a message, it's evil. We're not safe in this city, nor is anyone around us. Then we must not dawdle. Help me get Eula to her feet. No, no. I will not leave here without Davy. Miss, please, we must get you help. No, I will not be deterred. I will get my brother and bring him home. If my deductions are correct, Davy lies behind this door. He ought to be unhurt, but is no doubt shaken. Davy? Davy, you there? Davy? We understand what you witnessed before. It's safe now. You're safe. Please, let us in. Your sister wants to see you. Everything will be all right, I promise. Yeah, them gentlemen speak the truth. Just, just open the door. Big sister's here for you. Davy, oh, come here, you. Thanks, sirs. Lord bless your souls. Let me examine him, miss. I want to make sure he is unharmed. Remember, he may be mute, but he still understands you.
Davy seems in good health. The bruise is a remnant of that awful night, perhaps even caused by the intruder, but he is otherwise unharmed. In fact, I believe life here was good for the boy. Arneson and the others cared for Davy. That may have allowed him to withstand such horrors. I need your help, Davy. We know that the man with the curved dagger is responsible for all this. You recognized the man, yes? The same one in the photograph in the office upstairs, standing with Arneson. Good. Please, write his name. And one last thing. The room with an image of a bell on its door may hold important answers. Do you know a way in? Yes. I think I've got it. You have been very helpful, Davy. Oh, Davy. Things you must have gone through. Davy is calm and collected despite enduring all these horrors. An impressive young man. Let's take a closer look. These should come in handy. <laughs> Dense and disturbing notes. It's hard to follow. The scene is impossible, unnatural, but also familiar. A black opal, cut and polished, easy to sell. A foreigner's clothes, by the looks of things from the Near East.
angels, sirs. All y'all lacking is a pair of wings. Arneson's signet ring, as we saw in his portrait. Well, isn't that interesting? Hello again, Lucy.
My princess, my love, my heart. Fitting words. It's almost a piece of art. We must stop this, Holmes, all these atrocities. Davy, we know that Ashmat is responsible for what happened here. We must catch him and hold him accountable. I know that you are scared, but you are also the only one who can help us. I believe Mr. Arneson showed you a cryptic telegram that was sent to Ashmat. You are an impressive boy with a phenomenal memory. Can you tell us the contents of that message? Thank you, Davy. Watson, please copy down everything he writes. We still have to find Arneson. After all we have learned. I fear for his fate. Pray you find Mr. Arneson as well, in one piece to boot. We must put an end to all this evil, and I doubt we can count on the sheriff's help.
got a spot in mind. New Orleans port, and quickly. and slaughtered, a woman lynched, a boy forever traumatized. I fear we've crossed the Rubicon, Holmes. Davy is resilient, much like Eula. They will overcome this. You're right, but I worry this portends far worse for us. What have we got ourselves into, Holmes? At least the weather is on our side. Nolans may look welcoming, but not every smile is friendly. Hopefully we won't stumble upon the sheriff. Johnny boy, so how was it with champagne? Most enlightening, thank you. And now my friend Mr. Holmes would like to talk to you too. Well, ain't you something? What can I do for you? I'm afraid I bring bad tidings. How bad? It concerns your significant other, Arneson. Arneson? Now who said we were lovebirds? Lucy, we only mean to help. No word of the matter shall spread. What are you implying? The man in this letter seemed ready to declare his feelings for you. Sounds like he was more than a client. It's part of the job. Men can say weird things when they think they're in love. This photo of you and Mr. Arneson suggests the feelings were reciprocated. Looking interested when with the client is part of the job, Mr. Holmes. I don't even remember the man. You mean to say you take pictures with everyone? If they ask nicely. And pay.
Arneson definitely paid for a ring in your size inscribed, My princess, my love, my heart. It is for you. Arneson was going to propose marriage. The facts are clear. You know Mr. Arneson and perhaps even love him back. Regardless, he has been abducted. His life is hanging in the balance. Please, help me save him. Oh, oh my arrow! What have you gotten yourself into? I, I didn't want to believe this could happen. Lucy, Lucy, what do you know? Could it have been the sheriff? I don't know, John. This town has darkness in it. Errol and me, we had plans, dreams. We wanted to make this place better for all the folk who live here. Errol had grown suspicious of Ashmat, thought he was acting odd. He brought up the bayou. I told him to leave it all alone. The water's there, they swallow everyone. You mean the alligators? No, no, no. It's local legend. The bayou's dangerous. Any visitor that sees death messengers, they die. These messengers, are they abstract or a landmark? They're white lilies. You see a path with them flowers, you turn around. All right, Watson. We must find someone to take us to the bayou. Lucy, you have our thanks. We will go and look for Arneson. <sighs> Perhaps when this is over, we can try the Louisiana cuisine. Hello again, and thank you. Your last tip proved extremely useful. Don't mention it, Cher. Champagne ain't one for trickery. Now, if you need more help... As it happens, we need to take a short trip through the bayou into the nearby swamp. Of course, you'd receive fair compensation. It's almost dusk, and only fools go into that swamp at night. Come back tomorrow. Champagne will take you down. That will not do. We must go now. It is of grave importance. I won't take you. But if you're crazy enough to go, I'll sell you the boat. Wouldn't you know it, I came across a bottle of your namesake. Will that be enough for a boat? It's warm. The bottle's dirty. But we got a deal. I'll even lend you this rifle. <laughs> if you're going into swamp, you'll need it. One last favor. The boat that we came on is to leave tomorrow for Europe. Would you kindly relay a message to the crew for us? We may need them to hold their departure till 8 in the morning. Of course. At least, in Afghanistan, we had nippy nights. It makes one yearn for rainy London. This place, Champagne, did not mince words about it. Keep your wits about you, Watson. We are inching closer to the heart of this mystery, however dark it may be. Hell's bells! I told you to stay away, Doctor. That he did, Holmes. I rule these walls. No hiding from me here. No case goes cold on my watch. Settle down, boys. Our friends are as good as gone. This is it, Watson. Our moment of truth. Oh. 
Holmes, do you believe the Sheriff that we won't escape? One cannot be hurt by superstition, Watson. Look, Holmes, fireflies! Growing like a professional, Watson. University of London Boat Club. Silver medalist, 1874. Whatever or whoever it was, we should ready ourselves. hearing drums. Drums in the bayou? underneath our boat. Probably just a rotten log. Did you hear that, Holmes? What do you see? A shadow. Nothing more. If you told me, when I binned your paper, that we'd end up fleeing the law in a rowboat through the Louisiana Bayou... <laughs> I dare say you would have hardly been surprised.
The air is getting thicker, almost suffocating. The stench of death. All too familiar now. Weeks of damp. We're more likely to sink in there than on our boat. Let's go. Ropes holding a few of those poor souls. Watson, stay calm but be quick. An alligator has noticed us. That's that's vicious. That's nature. What's a sign of art? Let's try not to annoy. Not let's push on. Promising over there, Watson. We're approaching the heart of darkness. Footprints left by a crowd of shackled prisoners. This place gives me the shivers. Despite the muggy night. Ashmat dragged Arneson here. of burning flesh, just a Keep fiery away from it. Focus gathering. on our tasks, and so we may soon leave all this behind. A heavy weight scored impressions in the ground one inch deep. Days old and rotten. Damp and moldy hay. The prisoners were kept like animals, slowly deteriorating under the gruesome treatment. The wood is swamp cypress, endemic to the area. The blood is dry. The axe has not been used for some time. 
A simple rope. This is how those poor people were crucified. Initials EA are embroidered with silk thread. The prisoner's clothes tossed aside. Blood was poured over someone, leaving a gruesome silhouette. A worn blade, but clean and without blood. Bowls filled with blood. This indentation was spared from blood. The tracks lead behind the stone slab. It's not Arneson. This is not Arneson, just another unfortunate soul. Thankfully, Arneson isn't among the... The hand tied here was bleeding in four places. This had to have been Arneson. Both ends of the rope were cut cleanly. a lot of blood, but probably not enough to be fatal. The captive was dragged through hell. The victim's left hand pulled at the soil. Sunken heels, the result of dragging a heavy body. The bloody handprint on this stone lacks four fingers.
Arneson was held captive in this cage until his abductors tied him to a cross and dragged him to the bonfire. Arneson was left hanging here for a while before being freed and led to the altar. At the altar, Arneson's captors performed a ritual on him and poured blood over his head. With Arneson now prepared, he was escorted to the sealed entrance. They used the mechanism with an indentation to open the passage. blood. Darn it. Something is wrong with my lantern. Give me a minute. I won't wait for you. I'm going in. It's nothing, Holmes. I'll join you in a minute. Still warm. Ah, what's happening? Deja vu and not in a pleasant way.
And now, axes? What's on earth for? that glow again. Awesome. I hope that was all. I can't take any more. At last, the lantern's working again. Holmes, I'm coming. Holmes, what are you doing, sitting in a place like this? How did you get here? How did you get through the maze? Tell me, Watson. What maze? I walked straight up to you. You saw me. Do not lie to me, John. How did you get out? Sherlock, what happened? Are you feeling all... Oh, heavens. Is that Arneson? Why didn't you mention him? Stay put. I must check if he is alive. I just need a second, John. I should please tell me there are no eels inside, Arneson. Blunt trauma to the cranium, dilated pupils, Lips moving without a sound. Cold sweat. Two, no, three ribs fractured. Pulse is racing. 110 beats a minute. Severed fingers, the wounds are inflamed. Arneson is delirious after all he's endured. We can't get into the boat in a state like that is dangerous to us and him. Pokeweed berries, though they appear harmless, the whole plant is lethal. Pharmacopoeia. Listing drugs, effects, and directions for use. Some kind of Amanita mushroom. Extremely poisonous. <laughs> Odorless, watery, and hard to identify. The nightmares these poor souls had to endure. I can't decipher that text. I wonder what this language is. The walls are spinning. Let me catch my breath. Hard to tell what it says.
This is Dwale, induces sleep and relaxation. Salvia divinorum, provokes visual hallucinations. A gluey decoction. The smell is herby but sharp. It appears burnt, judging by the color. This should help soothe Arneson. I see. I need some fresh air. Yes, please go. I'll be right behind you with Arneson. Perhaps you can prepare the boat. Without purpose, and now see the truth. Tear me mind from my flesh, scar me festering soul. Phantoms of nothing, we are born to die. Filled in the eyes of our eldritch lord. Free my festering soul and let me feel. Oh, please, I wish to return. Free me, let me return. Free me and rejoice. Eyes without purpose, I now see the truth. Tear my mind from my flesh. Holmes, are you all right? Here, let me help. I'm fine. Holmes? Sherlock! What the hell were you doing? He almost killed you. I don't... You're right. Let's go, Watson.
Bon Dieu. Still among the living. We are, though not for lack of trying by the sheriff. Well, he'd been telling people you died in the swamp despite his trying to save you. <laughs> Crooked man. Through and through. Wait, is that Mr. Arneson? Yes, but he's not well. Do you know Lucy? Belle from the Nymph? That I do. Please bring her here. Mr. Arneson needs to see a familiar face if he's to have any chance of surviving. <sighs> Power of the heart. I get you. Wait here. Uh, Errol? Oh, Errol! Reckon we should give him space. Farewells are painful. No, 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 no. Tell me that's not true. Watson? Mr. Arneson has endured a lot, lost four fingers, a lot of blood, and some of his sanity. But with rest and tender care, he ought to survive those injuries, both physical and mental. Thank you, Johnny. I'll take care of him. Thank you for bringing him home to me. We'll be all right. Are you quite certain? Do you have the space? The resources? I will stay with him at the mansion. It is not a burden to take care of your love. His property is in quite a state. It may not be the best place for recuperation. Hush now. Champagne will see it sorted. Then it's settled. Hear that, Errol? Us living under one roof. Careful what you wish for. Oh, and Champagne? I'm about sick of watching that sheriff run riot through New Orleans. We ought to talk. Funny. I was just thinking that Grog did nothing to save your man. Together, I reckon you, me, and Arrow have the sway to make some changes around here. I like the sound of that. Holmes, our boat. Oh, we must make haste. Farewell all. Take care. Who's there? Hmm. Who do you think? Let it be known that I'm handy with this revolver. Nonsense, Dr. Watson. As I understand it, when faced with the imperative to defend oneself, one's comrades, and one's nation, you fled. I... I... Aren't you going to introduce us, Sherlock? Watson, meet my brother Mycroft, the Queen's best boy. This is a grim augury indeed, for wherever Mycroft travels, tedium surely follows. In contrast, of course, to Sherlock, a man whose obsessive pursuit of the trivial tears through the most carefully laid plans like a hurricane. Do you have any idea what you have disrupted? <laughs> your ego is inflated as much as your waistband. What word comes to mind? You... you work for the government? International trade is a delicate beast. Your antics and Edelweiss have jeopardized one of the Crown's richest relationships. Oh dear, as rich as all the butter you've been slathering on your bread? We need your help. What? There is evil afoot. Strangeness and savagery like I have never seen. Something otherworldly festering in the dark beyond our reach. We have seen things that defy explanation. Mystic forces, magic. You must help us. It's true. The British government does not invest its resources in the insane or intoxicated. Pull yourself together. I know men like you. Men like you grease palms, whisper in ears, start wars, and you send men like me to die in them. You, and the rest of your corpulent cronies. Ha! Corpulent! That was it. Interesting, Sherlock. But as you again drift away from sanity, you find yourself another job. All right, so the choice is made. I beg your pardon? There is only us. We cannot run from this problem. I shall take the book and Davis' cryptic message to Barnes. See what he makes of it. Hmm?
As you were, Watson. Do what you must. Another sinking near Scotland. By the strand for the details. Go cool. Thank you, sir. It has been a while, Barnes. Dr. Watson. Indeed it has, and good to see you as always. Uh, how can I help? Someone is full of pep. Oh, uh, yes. Mr. Holmes, he, he was quite the inspiration. Last time you were in town, he offered me some stirring advice, which I have since acted upon. Holmes is nothing if not provocative. Indeed. The thorny truth is often hard to hear. But it did the job, and now my heart is full. I'm glad to hear it. Much obliged, Doctor. Barnes, does Stevenson's guiding light mean anything to you? Uh, well, my mind first goes to Robert Louis Stevenson, an up-and-coming author. I've been following his work in the periodicals. Interesting man. I take it his literary pursuits are somewhat of a deviation from the family business. What makes you say that? He wrote a poem. Let me see if I have it still. Uh, yes. Say not of me that weakly I declined the labours of my sires, and fled the sea, the towers we founded, and the lamps we lit. Hmm. The labours of his sires. I wonder what they do. I have a book on great British families. If the Stevensons have achieved anything of note, they will be in there. Please, feel free to take a look. It should be on the shelves to the right. Much obliged. Last time we met, you mentioned your knack for translating occult texts. I was wondering if you could help me with this book. Certainly, I... Goodness. Where on earth did you procure this grimoire? That's a long story. What do you make of it? It seems to describe pagan rituals, ancient deities... Wow! What a marvel! I can try and translate it for you. Um, just the pages bearing that symbol. This section, really. Entity of ocean. More time. Oh, my. Oh, uh, already on it, as you can tell. <laughs> if you can have it done at your earliest convenience, that would be lovely. A moment, please. Spellbinding pages. For some reason, it makes my skin crawl. Take care of your master. Nearly done, Doctor. Have you found the book you're after?
Say, do you possess coastal maps of Scotland? Indeed. Have you figured out what the Stevensons are known for? Feats of lighthouse engineering. You have my thanks for the book. My pleasure, Doctor. Do you need any particular part of the coast? Loch Harbour, west coast. Right then, I'll unroll it on the desk. All yours. In the meantime, I will attend to my translation. Much appreciated. Barnes, have you finished with the book? Yes. I've written out a translation of the section you wanted. It, uh, puts the grim in grimoire. I thought as much. Long story short, it details macabre rituals, death, leviathans and the apocalypse. See for yourself. I must ask you to leave the book with me so I can read more of it. It's compelling. Very compelling. You have been of great help, so, yes. Excellent. I could barely put it down. Farewell. A fascinating book. Thank you for the opportunity, Doctor. Mycroft, here to buy a book on fraternal dysfunction? The Holmes family is beyond counselling, Doctor. True? More deserving of scientific study. What do you want? I came to warn you. Perhaps you have a moment to... Sorry, I reserve Tuesday afternoons for time with friends. I'm worried about Sherlock. He's not well. You should know that he has had episodes in the past. Detachment from reality. He will need your support. Such gall. First you crush him under your boot heel, now you ask me to pick up the pieces! Your emotions are impeding your rationality. He needs to be distracted, diverted into something less harmful. Surely, you jest. Only one thing shall truly bring him peace of mind, and that is solving his case. The last case he pursued so doggedly was Cordona. He came home a wreck, and this time I fear he may not return at all. You are not his father, Mycroft. Not anymore. He is a grown man, a brilliant man. I know you care for him. I just wish you also respected him. The crown cannot help you. But I can. Give him this. What is it? A confidential note tied to his case. He may see value in it. Just do not tell him it came from me. Oh, speaking of the crown, perhaps you can help us with another matter? It requires some local knowledge. I'm all ears. For your eyes only. Here is a folder with all the details.
the true facts. Holmes, I have the translation. Barnes will keep researching. Holmes? Watson? Did you hear me? Barnes gave us a preliminary translation of the book. I think we have a lead. Sherlock, what is it? I find myself burdened. It will come as no surprise that I tend towards obsession. Indeed, obsession oft grants me the insights that have become my stock in trade, but my greatest asset. Yet I cannot deny this nature proves as much a hindrance as a boon. It has cost me friends, colleagues, brothers. And despite my obsession, as I contend with the matter at hand, no closer to understanding than when we began, I... Well, I must conclude that I am of no worth at all. Without an answer, what use is the question? Sherlock, this is no time for despair. The book is real. Those men went mad. John, I fear that I am as mad as the rest of them. I bore witness to the same events that you did. I saw with my own eyes the inexplicable, the ghastly, and the unnatural. I can attest to their occurrence. So take heart, for it was as real as you or I. And thus, we must persist. Lives hang in the balance. If you cannot see your worth, then trust in me, for I see it. And I know of no other man capable of putting this matter right. Thank you, John. With that I possessed even half your courage. Pray tell, where does our journey end? Ardna Merkin, Scotland. Well, shall we be off? Yes, of course. You can apprise me of your actions while we pack. If we don't make land soon, I fear we will join those missing souls. These seas have taken too many, John. Let's stop them from taking more, then. and barricaded from the inside. The door won't budge. Boros, a snake eating itself, an ancient symbol of eternal renewal. Fresh marks, something scraped along the stone. This door requires a very specific key.
Where did the shirt come from? Holmes, oh, look. There's a body here. Not just body any body, soft. it's Ashman. He died recently. Scratches, bruises and stabs, all self-inflicted. Oh, his eyes are gouged out. The infamous curved dagger. It's tied firmly to his hand. A broken chain. Something was attached to the end. But he succumbed to all those wounds. This branch was recently broken. The wood is still green. A human-sized imprint. Someone fell on their back. Whatever Ashmat had secured to his chain, he lost it here. Scratches. This medallion saw frequent use. Interesting occult pattern. What drove him to this dreadful act? I fear we are about to see for ourselves. An old cannon, probably rusting here since the 16th century. That's a crafty mechanism, and quite ancient. An obsidian heart. Masterful work. This vessel is covered in dried blood. Oh, I get it. We need fresh blood. And no, I'm not volunteering. Fear not. I think Ashmas can help. Sealed shut and seemingly for a long time. They used fresh blood in some kind of ritual. Anything to hold blood, Watson? Fine, take my flask. The lever doesn't want to stay on its own. <clears throat> 
sealed shut and seemingly for a long time. Watson, hold the lever for me. I must investigate. Holmes, watch out! My lever went back up. The doors, Watson. Hold the doors. We're trapped! Now what? Look around. There must be something we can use. Those holes seem to have a purpose, but I won't risk my arm to find out what. for anything, Watson. It's all right, Watson. It's merely a chest with coins and a dagger, made of obsidian by the looks of it. Use these with care. Let us be the first adventurers to raid a tomb without destroying it. Terrific. Now, onward before they close again. Let us hope our paths converge, Holmes. Holmes, speak up! Holmes! Holmes, speak up! Sherlock? I'm coming! Keep talking! <sighs> Sherlock? Where are you? 
Holmes, speak up! Please, John. Holmes! Help me. Holmes, speak up! Come on, wake up! Thank heavens. What were you doing? What happened? The whirlwind. The stars are so distant. The sun inverts the earth. It becomes transparent. Sherlock, snap out of it. Nothing is everything. We are so small, inconsequential. A shadow in the dark. I... I think we best go back. You are not well, Sherlock. No, no. we are so close. We cannot... You asked that I intervene if I saw you cracking. This is me intervening. With every passing minute, 
Another life is extinguished. We must stop. Rochester, we must end this. Ah, oh, Sherlock, you almost died. Do not worry about me, John. You have other men to save. Sir, are you all right? No response. form of it, the color, it makes me feel uneasy. Black, metallic, and with a characteristic hue, obsidian yet again. This material feels very sturdy. It would take an enormous effort to break like that. I thought that I'd seen horrors during the war, but... Entranced, captivated by the light of the lens. Sherlock, don't touch it. We still don't know what it is capable. Base appears to rotate. Hands off, Holmes. We have no idea. trembling hands. It's not fear, it's adrenaline. Lens broke. 
John, the worshippers, we need to make sure. Of course, I'll see if they're all right. Mad cultists, ancient ritual sites. Had I known where this case would lead, I would never have brought you to see Stenwick. Stop there, shipmates! A storm awakens and we've battened down the hatches. Dirty summers, I presume. Nice to put a filthy, sweat-covered face to a name. That's no way to speak to a captain. Sherlock, get down! Watson, you killed him. I... I didn't have a choice. Well, what's done is done. If we do not stop Rochester, Summer's death will be but one of many. The sailor who didn't survive the storm. The Port of London feels so long ago. Forgive me, Summers. My sanity is slipping away. I feel like I've been there. Hold on. We need a plan. All right. Enough talk. Time for action. Hold on. We need a plan. They made sure no one could enter through the main door. They modify the gallery and watch room. Lead lenses are placed inside the lantern room. It seems they have placed beam emitters all over the main gallery. One moment, Watson. I'll redraw this blueprint. I know this company. They make Fresnel lenses, essential for any modern lighthouse lantern. Pay for padding. They didn't want their cargo damaged. Tell me you have a plan. Of course. 
We shall apply what we just learned, charge the Khalid lenses, and break them with the dagger. That should put a stop to this cursed ritual. All right, good. I confess, I worry about what awaits us. Is it too much to hope this will all come right? If our future is black, it is better surely to face it like a man than to attempt to brighten it by mere will-o'-the-wisps of the imagination. Come on. We'll go together. Hard to imagine what I'll recover from this. Look at them all. We have to help them. Watson, stop. Rochester will see you. What should we do? We get answers. Stay here. See to the lenses. I shall confront Rochester. He owes me the truth. Sherlock! Sherlock! Mr. Holmes, you are late. Was the path here not as you anticipated? You expected me? We've stood here before, Mr. Holmes. Another you, another me. Many years ago. I wonder what will happen this time. What? What are you talking about? Join me. Bear witness to the end. to anything, Lord Rochester. You are blind. Oh, how? How could you? It is what I do. No. How could you be so ignorant? For I have never seen more clearly than in this moment. Never felt more than I feel right now. Every fiber of the earth, every molecule reverberates in anticipation of the awakening. The bile of madness rises in our throats, just as our master rises below. I see moon beasts, night gaunts, a witch doctor in Arkham. I see what the stars themselves are dreaming. I know more than any man has ever known. You are delusional. How did you do it? The compulsions, the visions, was it some form of hypnosis or no? A drug, perhaps. Tell me. Bah! There is no ruse. There is no big reveal. It is exactly what it seems. You still fight so desperately against this truth, but you feel it too. Yes? Yes? You are mad. You have mistaken hallucinations for reality. Are you really one to talk, Mr. Holmes? Speak truthfully now. In the port. In the swamp. What did you see? Something beyond the capacities of my imagination. Our world so alien, but... But so familiar. Yes, I see it too, in your mind's eye. Untold horrors lick their lips in the shivering dreamlands, as Sarnath sinks eternal.
something is missing here. It's completely broken. Interesting. This could prove useful. to achieve with all this slaughter do these people deserve such suffering they are just tools their existence is meaningless unless put to use oh all-seeing master oh grand god beneath how he has blessed them with purpose you use them for cruelty i've seen a man eat his own flesh just to hear the whispers of lizards I've seen a mother behead her newborn, that she might travel to another world. Galaxies swallow each other whole. Light folds in on itself until nothing remains. You know not cruelty, Mr. Holmes. Cruelty is for such knowledge to be beyond the reach of so many. This is hubris delusion. You are Icarus flying too close to the sun. No, no. You misinterpret the legend, Holmes. Icarus flew! He reached heights no man had ever reached! One must imagine Icarus happy! He burned! Rochester plummeted to his death! And were you to ask him of his choice, he would have not a single regret! Every step I took was necessary! Every drop of blood a blessing! Every death predestined! Surely you understand! It was for knowledge! The only thing worth living for! Why must you remain so blind? Be honest! What is it you fear? I... I am afraid that it will cost me my sanity, much as it has cost you yours. There is no such thing as sanity. There is only the world as it is. And one's willingness to accept it.
you, you truly believe it? That a god arises from below that the world shall end? There is only nothingness. Only chaos and torture and endless time stretching its wings, baring its teeth. It's preposterous. It's nonsense. It's... You've... You've drugged me. Uh, the fumes in the temple, narcotics, are a bad reaction. Or you're one of my cross agents. Yes. Yes, this has the stink of my brother all over it. No, 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 wait. Of course, I am dreaming in the asylum. Uh, if in Black Edelweiss, uh, tied to a chair. You are standing right here, Holmes, as you always do. You... You said that before. You said we had met, but... I've never seen you before in my life. The cycle repeats. Old becomes new. And we remain pawns in the hands of a god. Submit! Submit to your inconsequence! It is unthinkable. It is undeniable. It... I cannot. When you have eliminated all which is impossible, then whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Now, Holmes! Now is the moment! You know it in your heart! Say it! Say it! It's... It's real. All of it, it's... It's real. Maybe your god is unstoppable, but you are merely a man, and I know how to stop you. What do you mean? What have you done? I have made a friend. Yeah! No! Curse you! Oh, great one! Forgive me! It is over, Rochester. I thought this time would be different. But the gods laugh at man's arrogance. Sherlock, come back down! The wave! Come with us! 
Turn yourself in, save yourself! The Abyss calls for me, Mr. Holmes, as it does for you. The final problem approaches, and you too shall fall! Sherlock, please! Rochester, don't! Such heights we reach! No! God! Sherlock, we must get inside! I have to see it, John! I have to know! Apologies, did I rouse you? I could relocate to the study, but I wanted to be at hand should you need me. No, no, no. The sound of your keys it is my tether back to the waking world. I find writing of our adventure helps me too. Perhaps at some point you could read it and tell me if it accords with your memory. There are moments in our journey that only you were privy to. Your encounter with Gygax, your visions with Light of the Abyss, your confrontation with Rochester? No. Pardon me? Do not publish it. It would be professional suicide. Uh, you would be a laughing stock, a fabulist, concocting penny dreadfuls for the unwashed masses. And I... Well, I would no longer attract a distinguished clientele, but madmen convinced I could connect them to their deceased relatives or... Help them capture a fairy. Ah. It doesn't seem to get any better, does it? When I close my eyes, John, I am falling. Falling into a black abyss. It is endless and suffocating and unforgiving. But I would give for a dreamless night. It's going to be all right, Sherlock. What is that? It will help you rest. No, 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 not that, no, no. I say, Watson, would you be afraid to sleep in the same home as a lunatic, a man with softening of the brain, an idiot whose mind has lost its grip? Not in the least. lucky.